This tutorial is about displaying output from MATLAB programs. Displaying the output can be very useful for things like making sure the program is running correctly by displaying the results of intermediate steps. It can also be nice to show the results of a program execution to the user in an organized, readable way. For these purposes, there are several functions in MATLAB that I will present. The easiest and least professional way to display output is to simply omit the semicolon after a statement, as I have been doing in these videos to show the output of every command I type. For example, if I type x equals 5, it will display the result right under the statement. This can be a quick and easy way to see output, but does not look very good. A better way to display output is to use the disp function. Disp takes one argument, which is a string. It may seem strange at first to display numerical results in a string, but it's not a problem using the technique described in the concatenation tutorial. Specifically, we can form a string using message equals open the bracket. The value of x is close that string and then num to str of the value of x and close that and we have a string and we can display it using this of message. As you can see the output prints nicely on a new line without extra spacing and equal signs as we saw if we simply omitted the semicolon above. An even better way to display output however is to use fprintf. This function gives a lot of control over the formatting of the output. fprintf takes a string as the first argument and an unlimited number of optional arguments as we'll see. fprintf can be used to simply display a message just like this. For example, fprintf of the string my name is Ilya. One thing to notice is that fprintf does not automatically put the cursor on a new line. This has to be done manually using backslash n. For example, fprintf, my name is Ilya, backslash n. Close that. And now it puts the cursor on a new line. fprintf recognizes the backslash as the start of a special command. There are other special commands such as slash t to insert a tab, which you can find in the documentation of fprintf. The most important character that is used in fprintf is the percent sign. fprintf recognizes the percent sign as the start of a placeholder for a variable. For example, if I type fprintf my name is percent %s, then a new line, then Ilya here. MATLAB knows that it has to insert a variable of type string indicated by the s. The value that it inserts instead of percent %s is a second argument, the string Ilya, as you can see when I hit enter. I can have as many of these placeholders as I like. For example, I can type fprintf my percent %s is percent %s, new line, first argument will be name, second Ilya, where each value that replaces the placeholders is listed at the end separated by a comma. Another very useful placeholder is percent %f which indicates a number with a decimal point. For example, we have fprintf, the value of pi is percent %f, new line, pi, where pi is a built-in MATLAB value. As you can see, we get many decimal places. In order to clean it up and make it look better, we can use some options. For example, fprintf, the value of pi is 
point, uh, percent point 0.2 f new line comma pi indicates that we want two values after the decimal. This is indicated by the point 0.2 where the number indicates how many points we want after the decimal. Another option is to indicate at least how many characters wide we want the entire number to be. For example, f printf, the value of pi is percent 6.2f, new line, close that, and pi tells MATLAB that we want the number to be six characters wide. So since we also told it that we want two places after the decimal, this makes the number 3.14, four characters wide, including the decimal, and it leaves two blank spaces out front. We could also fill those spaces with other characters. For example, f print f, the value of pi is percent 0, 0.6.2 f new line. where the zero right after the percent sign means we fill the empty space out front with zeros. There are many more things you can do, and they are all detailed in the documentation. If we type doc f printf, we'll get another window which shows a lot of the op options that I've been talking about. Here's this window. If you scroll down a little, you can click on Format Spec, right here, which will show all the possible options for fprintf, including the format, all the special characters, and the placeholders. So here's the general format. Here are the special characters. And here are the value, various placeholders for variables. A command that is very similar to fprintf is sprintf. While fprintf directly prints a formatted output on the screen, sprintf creates a formatted string and stores it to a variable. It is equivalent to storing the output of fprintf in a string variable. For example, s1 equals s printf the value of pi is percent 6.2 f pi stores the entire format as string in s1 now s1 can be used anywhere a string can be used for example with disp we can type disp s1 which is equivalent, in fact, to using fprintf if we say disp of sprintf with the same formatting as we would have used in fprintf. Additionally, there are many places where you can use formatted strings, such as when naming files or labeling figures, as we'll see in future tutorials. Overall, creating a nice output is important. Since results of calculations and simulations are useless, unless you can convey them in a meaningful way to the user. This is where commands like fprintf are extremely useful, and I hope you now have a better understanding of it.